represents is patriarchy. We're here to do work as men, as patriarchs. There's nothing more natural than being a father. Welcome back to the 21 Convention 2019 Patriarch Edition of Orlando, Florida. Our next speaker is a very good friend of mine. He's a twice returning alumni speaker to this convention. He first spoke in 2017 at our 10-year anniversary. He was recommended to me by the godfather himself, Rolo Tomasi. I was kind of skeptical. I didn't know what to make of this guy. I was like, who's this guy? Hunter Drew. Fell me off. I don't know this guy. I got to talk to him on the phone. Got to know him at the event. 2018 as well. He came back last year and kicked ass. As I told you guys at the beginning of this conference here in Orlando, this Patriarch Edition, he's actually the genesis for this specific event even existing. Without him approaching me to do a conference someday for him, for his company, I would have never had the idea. Uh, it doesn't make, uh, yeah, it's just fucking awesome. I'm so happy he came with the idea. It's never, uh, no one's ever given me an idea for a conference at that scale before. I'm very grateful for that. Without further ado, please help me welcome your chief patriarch, the man, the myth, the legend, Hunter Drew. Thanks, Hunter. Thanks, man. Yeah. Fucking A. <laughs> that was quick. We're at one. All right. When we first kicked this thing off. You know, hearing intros like that, it's wild. You try to rise up to it. We're all just men. That's what we're doing. You can put a lot of words to it. You can add a lot of titles to it. We're men. That's where it starts. We're men, we're lovers, we're fathers. That comes from a foundation of being a man. Don't ever forget that. We're all men, we're all on the same playing field, we're all working through the same things in life. Now before I get into this speech, I didn't get here alone. You know, when we had the conversation, hey, you got the green light, I was pumped. We're gonna do something for families. That's my shtick, man. That's, that's what I've been writing about this whole time, families, like, let's go. So I was pumped, it was cool. But how did I get here? You know, there's, there's zero special things about me. Nothing. I write, I talk, I do what you guys do. I lead. I'm a father. I get involved. That's it. So when I get the title, the chief patriarch, oh, patriarchy, it's cool. It's awesome. But what do you do with that? What does that mean? And I really was like, what does that mean to me? It just means right now it's my turn to have the mic. It's your turn to have the mic later. You'll be the chief patriarch when you go home. When we're sitting at a meal and you're teaching me something, you're the chief patriarch. So understand at the beginning of all this, all the titles, all the cool stuff that they're building up, all the fucks, all that, you know, it's just because I got the mic right now. You're the same thing. You're expected to play the same role. So there is, again, we're back to the round table. I didn't get here alone. Nobody gets anywhere alone. So there are a few people I wanna recognize early on and then we're gonna roll with this thing. And I really hope it changes your life forever as well as your children and their, your children's children. That's how serious I am about this speech that we're about to give. First is Anthony Johnson. He's the one who greenlighted all this. He's the reason I'm on this stage. He's the reason we're having this event. He's the reason that this thing's going on. And I know in the, the intro, I brought the same thing up, but I'm gonna say it again. The only reason I'm standing on this stage is because of that man. The only reason your asses are on those seats is because of that man. Recognize that. That's hard work. That's dedication on his end to bring us together. This doesn't just happen, all right? We're not women. This is hard work. This is discipline. This is dedication. You got it. So, thank you, Anthony. Second, I want to thank Rolo Tomasi. He was the one that put my name up, up, up onto that roster. Without him, I wasn't even considered. He's the one that said, hey, this guy, is, he's talking about something. Give him a look. So without Rolo, I don't make the roster. I don't have the opportunity to share my voice. I think I've done well. I think when I took the stage, I did exactly what he expected me to do, to spread the message, to stay true to my values and to what is important to me. The third is Ivan Throne. I went to a dark spot. I thought it was time to shut this thing down. I've been writing for a little bit, but what does a father have to do with the red pill and manosphere and masculinity? I'm just a dad. That's it. Why, why should I continue? So I went to his room and I told him, I'm done, man. I'm pulling the plug after 2017. And he sat me down and he said, no, you're not. Because if you do, you'll have blood in your hands. All those emails you received of men saying I would have killed myself had I not found this. My wife hates me. My children don't respect me. I don't know what to do. He's like, all those emails, when they don't have that resource, where do those men go? Because some men are looking for the ropes you're throwing specifically. He threw me a rope. He's the only reason anything I've done up to this point exists. I co-founded the Fraternity of Excellence. That doesn't happen. 
I received many more of those emails, which while it's good to hear that somebody is still breathing because of the words that you put out into the world, it's sad that you have to read those. It's sad that men are going to that point. The resources we're creating are that important. Without Ivan Throne, I'm not up here. So when I'm talking to you guys about having those conversations, about getting over the ego and saying, I need help with this, let me talk with that, you're not less of a man for asking for help. Being able to have that conversation shows me that you're willing to do the work because you're willing to feel the pain of embarrassment. Some men are embarrassed saying, I need help with this. I don't know how to raise my son. My father didn't teach me. I don't know how to pass it on. I want to break the cycle. I truly do. I want things to be better for my family, but I don't know how. Do you know how hard it is for someone to say that? Just thinking of that man right now, my throat's closing, and it's not because I'm, ner I'm not nervous anymore. That intro got that out of the way. I'm good. <laughs> but thinking about that man in that situation, that's rough. Some men are in dark spots, and they want better. So be there. Be that man who listens to them. Be that man when you leave here, you can throw them a rope. There's nothing wrong with asking for help. There's nothing wrong with giving help. Once you climb out of that hole, you have a choice. You've got the rope in your hand. You can help the next guy. Or you can go forward and do your thing. It really, there's no wrong path. Live your life, do very well. Had I not been writing for the Family Alpha, I'd be doing what I'm doing now without this. Kicking ass, taking names, leading my kids, having an awesome time with my wife. That's what I'd be doing. But I chose to throw a rope because that's in me. If you choose to throw ropes, understand, those men, they're going to grab it, they're going to climb. And when they get up there, you have the opportunity to be like, hey, now you've got it. Now your torch is lit. Now you can go forward. Throw a rope to somebody else. So those three men, I wanted to recognize first and foremost because nobody gets anywhere alone. And I don't want the, the, the crazy titles. I know we're joking, we're amplifying it. But I don't want that to get lost. I didn't get here on my own. I got the mic right now. You'll have the mic later. I look forward to talking to all of you. There's a fourth man, and he's an individual who has significantly helped me, personally, professionally, and that's Tanner Guzzi. We've had a lot of conversations that people haven't seen. He's given a lot of advice, him and his wife, great family. They've given me advice, and I was like, wow, maybe I could take this thing and actually do something with it. And he was that support. He was there when I'm, I'm looking down, like, I, I don't know how to do this. How did you do this? Hey, man, here you go. Here's a rope. Here's how I did this climb. Oh, I'll take it. I'll run with it. Because of him, as soon as I get back from this convention, I'm dropping notice to my job that I'll be going full time doing TFA and FOE, which I'm really looking forward to because that's more creation, that's more time with the family that's able to build my mission and my dream. So thank you, Tanner. And he played a large part in what I'm going to be talking about today, which is a patriarch type. But understand, Tanner's a patriarch. All the men speaking, patriarchs. All these men are living the message that they're putting out to the world. You guys can tell what fake is. You sit down with us, have a conversation, you know immediately, that guy's full of shit, or that guy stands for what he believes in. When you talk with Tanner, you see that. He's leading the family. He's leading the business. And guess what? While he's doing so, he's helping his fellow man. Because when you succeed, we all succeed. When he succeeds, I succeed. When I succeed, you succeed. It's like a rising tide. Our success lifts all of our boats. There's no competition here. I walked through the airport. How many people said, oh, Hunter Drew, what's up, man? Can you sign my tits? Well. <laughs> the grand total of zero. Nobody knows who I am. Nobody knows who half of us are. We're nowhere near you know, the apex of what we can do with this, what we can do with spreading our message and building our businesses and growing our, our families. We like to get lost in this world where we're, where we're bigger than we are, but we're not. And that's a beautiful, humbling thing, especially when you're walking through the airport and you see families that are doing well. You see the father walking, holding his wife's hand, you see the, well, the put-together children. There is good in this world, and we can't lose that. But we need more. Because unfortunately, when you see those families, there's a lot more who are overweight. There are a lot more who are bickering at each other because they don't understand how to go through stressful situations and rely on one another for strength. There's a lot more of that going on. And we need to rebuild our patriarch types so we can fix that, so we can turn the tide. This is, a mess. This is the hill I will die on. This is where you'll, you'll have to, to take me offline, and even then I'll try to rebuild it. That, that's how important this is to me, building families and helping men know it's okay to be a family man and a man. Because your family is built off that foundation of being a man. Because before you were a father, before you were a husband or a lover or whatever your situation is, before all of that, all those titles, you were a man. 
You were born a man. You've got responsibilities, duties, and, and skill sets that come with being a man. Take pride in that because everything is built upon it. If you're a good man, you can be a good father, but you can't be a good father without being a good man. That's where it starts, working on you. And we'll get into that more coming. But for right now, keep that in mind. Everything I'm talking to you about, everything I've done and will do is based off being a man. Every single speaker that you see, that is the foundation. Before you see, that's a father, that's a man who leads a family well. Subtle difference, but it matters. Now, when I said Tanner inspired this and kind of led it, obviously, we've got the archetype up here. He's got his archetypes. He talks about the rugged. So you think about the Jack Donovans, the guys who are strong with their hands. They're out in the woods building things. You're the wild guy. You've got refined. That's Tanner. That's Tex. The studs. They like, they like things squared away. Symmetry. Rules. And you've got rakish. Guys like Goldman. Guys that are, that are the free spirits. They're out doing their thing. The way you're, you express that type with society is how you interact with society. You're saying, this is me, and here's what I'm presenting. This is what I want to show the world. And in turn, society interacts with you. This is what you look like and how you act. So this is how we will treat you. If you command respect in all three of those, you get respect in all three of those types. Understand that being one does not mean that you, you, you are confined to that one. You can be all. Now let's look at family men. When you're a patriarch type, that is how you're interacting with your family. That is how your family is interacting with you. Men who are domineering and using fear to lead, that's a part of the archetype. Men who are dominant and using inspiration to lead, that's a part of it. You want to make sure you're falling on the right side. There are many different types of patriarchs. What's yours? How do you lead? Again, you're not one, you're, you're all. There's a little bit of each in you. And you play all those roles, especially as a man. When you are a man, a lover, and a father, your patriarch type, you are all three of those things. The foundation from which you base all of your decisions is a belief in self. It is an investment in self. It is an irrational confidence to where you know you will win when it's 400 to 1. The lover, whether you're married, you're spinning plates, your relationship status means nothing to me. I judge the merit of your character. But when you're dealing with those women, how do you deal with those women? Do they become your mission? Is that your life? As you go through, and a lover, and you lose yourself, oh man, I gotta make her my world. Now you're not being a good man. Now you're screwing up the other part of that trifecta. And then you look at how you perform as a father. They've got a roof over their head, they've got food in their plate. That's good enough, right? That's how it used to be. That doesn't show up. Go later than that. You know, hey, you're alive. I killed the saber-toothed tiger. Cool. Go later than that. Hey, you're, you're, you were born. I'm a dad. That's it. We live in different times right now. We're facing different beasts. It's no longer the woolly mammoth that's coming after us. It's society. It's messages. It's social media. It's a barrage of electronics going into your child's mind, trying to instill software that's going to tell them how to perform. Your children will default to, to the lowest, the weakest habit that you've instilled in them. If that's giving up, they're going to quit. If that's believing others, not having confidence, they're going to quit. They're going to do that. As a father, you have different expectations now, and your children are facing different beasts now than in any other time in our society. So showing up and putting a roof over their head, that's no longer good enough, because you're leaving your children to the wolves. I don't know if it was Dr. Smith or George, but one of them brought that up. That's exactly what they're doing. If you are just showing up, a walking paycheck, your children are like lambs to slaughter, and society will take them and destroy them and break a beautiful thing. 